from Beatlemania to the Backstreet Mania. Have you guys dealt with those comparisons before, and how does it make you feel? I totally don't feel worthy of the comparison, but I think the, the Mania is, is definitely there. Uh, looking back on some of their old footage, uh, watching the, uh, the documentaries on them, and we, we definitely have lived some of that. Yeah. We actually took the, the spoof of the uh, Hard Day's Night into the Sears commercial that we did right. the last tour. Yeah, exactly. That's like running all around. See, I knew it was there. <laughs> when, I, when I talked to Sir Paul McCartney, um, he's been knighted, a few days ago, he had plenty to say about our number 28 song, and this is amazing. In my life, here's some of my conversation with Mr. McCartney. Aww. Beatles in my life, number 28. The Backstreet Boys will be here with us when we come back, and we have more of the greatest pop songs. Plus, we'll find out from Fred Durst why he used to dress up like Michael Jackson. I'm dying to know the answer to that, and we'll be right back. And we're back with the 100 Greatest Pop Songs Countdown of Carson Daly, and we have the Backstreet Boys here with us as we track through music history. We started off uh, the show with number 40, and now we're up to number 27. And here's a tune I know Kevin might want to talk about, being the big Prince fan. I'm sure we have a few Prince fans here. I guess when you think of pop, you really, he's got to be one of the first people that comes to your mind. And When Doves Cry is the song at 27. Totally. Um, it's funny because his earlier albums before Purple Rain were kind of like very controversial as far as the material and the subject matter and what he was talking about like this album totally put him into pop infamy i think for me growing up it was um you know like purple rain in uh, 1999 and little red corvette yeah, totally. as well little red corvette was um was at number 50 on the countdown and back in the in the 1980s there were really only two pop icons at the time they were michael jackson and bruce springsteen and this was a song that added prince to that list Fleetwood Mac, Go Your Own Way, was number 26. And you guys came up uh, just about the same time as um, the artist that's next on the list, Britney Spears. AJ, I mean, what, what's left to say about this woman's incredible run in the 90s? Great, great career going for her. She's also one of our label mates, too, so, you know, but we haven't, you know, really got to meet her all that much, but, you know, she seems to be doing really, really, really well. Congratulations to her. Not since Madonna's Like a Virgin had a woman blown up the pop world quite like uh, Britney did with this hit. She took MTV by its storm and let the world know that there was a new female performer to heat up the charts. It, the charts. it inspired one of the coolest cover versions. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this from a band called Travis. And they said they did it as a tribute, not as a joke. Let's hear what other artists and experts have to say about the young lady who was probably the 90s female pop entity. We're back with the Backstreet Boys counting down the 100 greatest pop songs, Beatles to Backstreet, the definitive list of the best ever. The guys are here, and we also are including throughout the show my exclusive interview with Sir Paul McCartney. And it's all about great music today. And someone uh, in the audience right here is Mike. What's up, Mike? Hey, Carson. You got a question for somebody up here? Yeah, hey, Nick. Uh, did you ever get into the whole Michael Mania thing? Michael Jackson Mania thing? Yes. Um, a little bit. Actually, I got into it late. I just recently got into it. You're late. You're That's late. late. So, a couple years late. I get. I really get into things. I mean, it t it it takes a while for me to like get used to things and, and to hear things. Mm. I guess it's just because I'm. If I'm listening to a CD, I'll listen to it for a whole year straight, <laughs> and I forget about everything else. Yeah. We should go back for a second, and it seems uh, probably novelty now because he's such a huge superstar, but back in the day, this was a time when rock radio stations rarely ever fit black artists onto their playlists, but this was a song that they, they had to make room for, and thanks to a wicked guitar solo by Eddie Van Halen and, of course, the enormous buzz that had been caused earlier by Billie Jean, suddenly Michael Jackson found himself getting more airplay on more stations than ever, and this pop classic made Thriller one of the most successful albums ever. Beat It is at number 22. Bob Dylan, like a Rolling Stone, number 20. And now we've got a song that uh, helped give uh, sort of a, I guess, a dance craze. It was, I guess, a lot better than the Macarena, that's for sure. We're talking about Madonna and Vogue, and I know that you are a big Madonna fan. I'm sure everybody is, of course. Big time. We've all grown up on Madonna. Um, this is Madonna's uh, second appearance on our Top 100. And after years of influencing fashion trends with Vogue, Madonna proved that she was queen of the dance floor, and still is, by the way, in more ways than one, and she is striking a pose at number 19. All right, and uh, welcome back. 
We're here in Times Square for MTV and Rolling Stones' 100 Greatest Pop Songs Countdown. If we made, I guess, a pop music time capsule from the Beatles to the Backstreet era, these are the 100 songs that would certainly make the grade. We're counting them down, and we're hearing what some of uh, today's stars have to say about these incredibly important songs. Plus, we have the Backstreet Boys here. It's great for you guys to be a part of this. And we're just sort of, uh, they're helping me take a little look back at music history, and we're uh, getting into song uh, number 18 now. And R.E.M. lead singer and songwriter Michael Stipe has always said that the phrase, losing my religion, is a southern expression for, quote, being at the end of your rope. This Grammy winner was the biggest hit from one of the world's biggest rock bands, and once and for all, people, it is not a song about religion. Stevie Wonder, Superstition, number 17. Uh, a few songs back, we had uh, probably the ultimate breakup song in Fleetwood Mac's Go Your Own Way. And of course, there's uh, there's one person who's suffering <laughs> over there somewhere. After the breakup comes the heartache, and no other pop song tears into that broken heart probably better than this one. This is a, a song that Prince wrote, and it became um, Sinead O'Connor's biggest hit, and it's at number 16. We've got the Backstreet Boys in the studio here to help count down the 100 greatest pop songs, Beatles to Backstreet, and we're getting schooled on what made these songs so great and so damn important. The Rolling Stones are showing up now for the second time in the countdown. Of course, I'm here with, um, with Kevin and Nick, and, you know, Mick Jagger was somebody who played music as young as you guys are now, and he's almost well into his 60s, and is still doing it, and some people argue better now than then. How, is there any way to... I mean, it's so long from now. It would be like 40 years for you. Do you, see, do you still see yourself wow. <laughs> are you playing I mean, at that point or performing? I mean, um, I, I, I can see it happening. I mean, the love of music never dies. You know, I think we, we always want to be involved in the business somehow. And I, I, I think as long as we communicate and everything's good with us, I think we'll be around for hopefully forever. And Kevin, do you think maybe just having that uh, that adrenaline on stage and performing is something that you just never would want to leave? It might always be a part of you. I, I think we would definitely miss uh, miss it, being on stage and performing aspect. But, you know, when we're too old to move around and stuff like that, it'll be cool to just chill in a house somewhere, have kids and write songs for the rest of our lives. Yeah. So, all right, unless you're Iggy Pop and you can just go forever and ever and ever. <laughs> Uh, in 1971, they just started their own record label. They adopted the Lips and Tongue logo, which is the Andy Warhol design, by the way. Um, with Brown Sugar, a decade began where they proved what they'd always said, and that's that they were the greatest rock and roll band in the world. Ah, now that particular one's Eagles Hotel California, number 11. As we were just talking about, that was a song that, I mean, I just remembered my parents, my mom playing it. And then I sort of fell into it with my friends. But I remember the first time somebody told me that Hotel California is hell. Stay dead. You know, it was a song about going to hell. It was a journey, bro. Totally. Through you life. Can, you can check in, but you can you, never leave. Yes, exactly. Never leave. I think it, 